Ladies and gents, it's Footy Rants. We're back, and for the review for round three, I finally have Cuff back on board. So we've been getting um, plenty of good feedback. Mm. Um, yeah, we have actually, particularly within, I guess, our our own social circle, which is ultimately why. Well, <laughs> I know I started this last year, but it's been great to have you on board, mate, and and spin some um, spin some yarns. It just it's good to be here, mate. Yeah, well, it's it's been an enjoyable experience for me. So Definitely, like, oh, yeah. absolutely for me as well. It's just something to do, and it's a good little hobby. Um, yeah. yeah, and I've been saying that to a few of, uh, in the comment section on our, our YouTube channel, to some of the people that we don't know personally, and they've been saying, you know, that some of the comments we've been getting is like, oh, I feel like this is footy getting spoken about at a level that I enjoy. Mm. And and I said to one particular fan that um, I, I felt that was because we don't get paid for this. Yeah. It's from pure enjoyment. Yes. So we're, we're speaking about things that are truly relevant as Wait opposed to... I'm, I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting paid. <laughs> no, it's, a, no, it's a good time though. And it also, it gives you another reason to watch the game. Yes. In, in more depth as well. Yeah, that, exactly right. I think we, you do watch the game a little bit differently when, we, when you're trying to speculate on certain things. And you yes. probably, yeah, do go a few, few layers deeper. So yeah, I've very much been in, enjoying it. Um, yeah, so a, a few... Interesting results again. A, a few interesting, I guess, methods of victory yeah. as we'll get to in, in that Bronx performance. Mm. Um, but yeah, who was who was your favourite team to sort of watch on the weekend? Dragons, easy. Yeah, just the way they they dominated yesterday. It's, um, it's pretty scary. How they getting real, about their work. It was scary. And I don't like it. Mm. Um, but you know what? I'm happy for Ben Hunt seeing him play the way he is. Mm-hmm. And um, Gareth Widdop's on fire as well. Yeah. So, do you feel like um, Hunt is actually starting to get utilised in the way that he should strengths. be playing? Yeah, I think he is because you've got Widdop there, who's already such an established and overall really good half. Mm-hmm. Um, ben Hunt's just got that little bit extra room to move. Yeah, I feel like he's got a lot less responsibility. Yeah. Like he's kind of just second fiddle to Widdop at the moment, and that's really suiting him. Yeah, he's actually enjoying that process of of sitting back and he's probably watching the game in a bit of a different light. Yeah, he would be. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what about you? Who, who do you think really? I I didn't get to see the, the whole ins and outs of, of yesterday's games because I obviously had my girls that were playing yesterday. But um, yeah, for, from what I did see of the Roosters-Knights game, it, it looks like yeah. they're, they're starting to develop into the, the side that we expect them to be on paper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that formation of of Kronk and Kiri. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, uh, wow! Well, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what that is like come Origin period, you yeah. know, and, and how that's going to start to to dictate the side that Brad Fittler starts to put together for the Blues. And uh, just a, as as a footy fan, I find I'm I'm able to separate myself from being a fan of of a team or a state mm. or a country to to a genuine fan of the game. Yeah. And I must say, I'm very much looking forward to, to seeing the style of play that the Blues are going to bring to the yeah. table this year. It's an exciting time um, for to be a New South Wales player. Absolutely. There's a lot of young bodies coming through and starting to mature in, in right areas. Um, they've got um, a wealth of outside backs to pick yeah. from. Um, there's going to be some back rowers that miss yeah. out that would be hard-pressed not being That's um, right. You know, all, all um, first up picks, but... I think this year is the first year in a long time for Origin where it's completely blown. Everything's just there's there's no real expectations. Like it's just everything's open. It's yep. just a can of worms at the moment because we don't have Thurston playing for Queensland anymore. We've no. got a new coach for New yep. South Wales. Yep. We've got a bunch of new players no that have come through. No Cronk as well. Yep. So we're gonna have a completely new Queensland Queensland spine Mm -hmm. and we're going to have a lot of changes in New South Wales. I think. Yeah, not to mention that even over the years. The next couple of years for Queensland, there's going to be even more changes. That's right. You know, Smith's going to go soon. Yeah. Slater. You know, Slater, Inglis, Darius yeah. Boyd, all those. Yeah, within oh. three years, those guys are pretty much going to be gone. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's exciting. exciting times. But, uh, yeah, getting to, to the point that we sort of discussed on the on the Facebook page around referees, mm. um, yeah, what, what's your general vibe around the whole penalty situation of that inside the 10? And Yeah, look, honestly, I like it. I like what they're doing. In the, like, I don't like what's happening, but I but I understand and I respect that this is what needs to happen for a positive change for the game. I feel like teams have been just, you know, taking the piss for too long, mm-hmm. taking advantage of the rules, taking advantage of the of the lack of nutsack of the referees, because that's what's been happening. Mm-hmm. The game has allowed the players and coaches to dictate the game. Yep. And I'm really happy to see the referees being able to take charge again and actually take back control of the game. Yep. And I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people complaining about all oh, these too many penalties and stuff like that. And yes, there is a lot of penalties, but 
Um, I think I feel like it just needs to happen for the players to learn the hard way. Yeah. And we see improvements in the game. Yeah. I, I, That's I, what I'm... I still yeah I I agree, <clears throat> but I would take that one further and say. I, I don't like seeing, the ten in the bin. Yeah, for for an infringement like that. Yeah, no. But at the same time, if if that's if that's all we've got at our, our disposal yeah, as a, as right. a referee, yeah, that's right. I think they need to start using it even more. Yeah. Because um, we we had a, a conversation with with a mate of ours, Jason. He made a really good point about this first game that we'll cover in the in the Storm and the Cowboys, and the Cowboys were penalised very heavily for for their performance in defence on their own line yeah. in the first half. Yeah. And I felt like they adjusted yes. in the second half and they got they got scored against with bodies laying on the on the ground yeah, in a rut right. because yeah. the defense wasn't then pushing up because mm-hmm. they didn't want to get penalized. Yeah, that's right. So but then the storm, they didn't alter their game whatsoever. They're like, well we're just gonna keep giving away penalties that we're where the storm and the cowboys the, the referees mm-hmm. have put their whistle away as far as sending anyone off. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I, I don't want to see more games decided like that if it's gonna mean that one team's stubborn and they're mm-hmm. gonna see, well, are we gonna get yeah. Get one sent to the bin. Mm. Are they going to send two to the bin if yeah. we lose one and we keep going? Yeah, no, nah, they'll never do that. I don't think they will. Nah. So nah. until there's some alterations in the rules around how we can um, discipline yeah. those sides effectively, um, I don't think you can keep going down this same line. There's got to be some no, element, got to be some element more. of give, or they they send them to the bin. Yeah. Well, what what would you what would you like to see come in next year? I really like, and, and I've I've said this a thousand times to, to our mates. So apologies if you boys are watching. I'm getting like an old record, but <laughs> um, I think Sterle brought it up a couple of years ago, yeah. and that defender gets taken off. He just stands behind the dead ball line, and he's set. Yeah, and and until they get the ball back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Until they get the ball back. Yeah. Nice. So if if you know there's a, a tap down and six to go, he's yeah. still off. You yeah. still haven't got possession of yeah. the ball again. Because then I think it, it starts to play into a, a more positive way mm. for a Melbourne Storm outfit like that. So it's like, okay, we back our defence. So it's like, well, do I get off the line and try and force the error at the risk of losing a player? Okay, we're down to 10. Still back ourselves. Yeah. Fucking get off the line. Yeah. You know. So I, I think it then creates certain dynamics where you're going to see teams try and flirt with that rule a yeah. little bit, but it's still entertaining. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's And it's... Doesn't because how cool the flow of the game? Either. No, exactly. Yeah. How cool would it be? It's like you got eight on the field because they're backing themselves, yeah. and then they force the error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, you're right. That's a whole different, be a whole different level. Yeah, so I'd like that. Either that, or it's yeah, got to be a, a, a three, five. a three. I like a three. You like a three minutes in bin. I like yeah. a three because then you're pretty much guaranteed. Like if you're defending already, when when you get sent off, you're just about out of the picture for two defensive yeah. sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're gonna have to defend that set again. Hopefully, they hold the ball. Then they defend one more, and, yeah. and, and you're away. So, but yeah, I, I think some changes need to happen around there. I, I think that that um, concept that I tossed up, I don't think it'll ever that brought it in the game. Probably I don't not. Think, I don't think Probably the powers not. that be will ever think that way. No, it'll be more some sort of yeah penalty where you you get sat down, but. Yeah, I'd say the next step is probably going to be like a five-minute penalty or something like yeah. that. Five yeah. minutes in bid. Yeah, I don't want to see games though continuously throughout the year where it's turning into rugby union where mm. there's like eight penalty goals in a game. Exactly. Well, that's you know, what the, the Bronx game turned into, right? That's you right. Know, it's, yeah. yeah, it was disappointing to watch as a fan. Yeah, it was actually. And then yeah. the fact that you know both teams played terribly. Let's face it, yeah. statistically, completion-wise, yeah. you know. Um, but it's just a scramble defense of both teams. Exactly, and yeah. and the scoreboard. End up is what made it entertaining. Yeah. The fact that the the Tigers lost the lead and fa- and then were able to take it to Golden Point again, yeah. much like when they lost the lead to the Storm and, and scored and won. Like yeah. they're showing grit and determination yeah, there, definitely. and yeah, it, it must be thoroughly disappointing to play more than eighty minutes and, and not come away with any points at all because of a penalty that once reviewed, the referees came back and said we got it wrong. Yeah, like that doesn't count for shit. Because well, yeah. what happens if the Tigers miss the eight by two? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That that can be the the drama well, of it. Why all. did they say it was wrong? That penalty. I, I'm not too sure. I mean, from what what I could see, I, the markers were split. And yes, it had happened a hundred other times throughout the game. But I'm, but looking at that penalty on its own, I thought they were, the markers were split and and one and they did make a charge down attempt. Yeah, so I, I, I think they said saying. because it didn't have any effect on the play. Okay. And then I think they actually ruled that Rocco was square. It was right. Godine that wasn't uh, square. Okay, but right. he didn't even chase. He went to the other side yeah, of the rack. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, harsh one, no doubt. Mm, yeah, but yeah, it's a shame that it, that a game finished in that in that way. Definitely. All righty, well, let's dive into into things. So, um, on going back to Thursday night, we had the Storm sort of run away against the Cowboys, thirty points to fourteen. 
Um, you know, I, I really felt as though it was a game that come the the middle portion of, of the second half was really in the balance. Yeah. Um, that there was a few key plays that uh, the Cowboys didn't capitalise on. There was a particular kick uh, where um, Justin O'Neill contested for the ball mm. and um, felt followed him in. Yeah. And the, the ball gets spat directly out to the right where he would have been if he yeah. hadn't followed him in. Uh, not that he shouldn't have followed him in, but, you know, it's just one of those chance plays is where the ball ended up. Yeah. Um, and that could have potentially taken us to, to 20 all. Yeah. Big, um, big so game. that was a big, big turning big point in the game. But, yeah, yeah I, I tend to agree with Paul Green's sentiments after the game. They, they just didn't win the effort moments. Yeah. I think he summed that up really well. Um, they the, the Storm had so much, um, I guess, respect for their own goal line. Yeah. Um, and and you can, oh, their inside defence is, is second to none. Yeah. Like, you're, you're hard-pressed finding a club that defends... The, the inside shoulder better than the Storm do. Their tie-in is great. Um, and it doesn't matter which um, substitute forward, starting forwards are on the field. Nah, doesn't that, matter if they're they being plucked from reserve roles. grade. Yeah. doesn't matter. You can pick them from under 20s and, Correct. and they'd be you know the same. Yeah, they, they know their role. And uh, once, once they show that resilience on their own goal line, I feel like it really breaks the opposition yeah, defensively because oh, you see them go on the attack straight away. Yeah. And like with, within defending that, um, two or three sets of six, they they'd scored again with the uh, Will Chambers try. Yeah, yeah, and then that's what broke them, and then soft scores um, with a few minutes to go, and yeah, it, it's a shame that the scoreboard looks quite unfavourable yeah, to the Cowboys. A, it was a lot closer than yeah, what the, it was, and we the see last those. two tries were in the, the last ten minutes. Yeah, but they just sort of ran away with it. But you're right, it was a lot closer. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's it's going to be interesting to see how the Cowboys respond. They've got Penrith. Um, this Thursday, so they've got seven days. So there's there's no excuses now, and they're and back back at home. Especially no Penrith, Cleary, Pen, no Cleary, and I don't think Penrith have won at uh, one three hundred small stadium for a long time. Yeah, right. Um, so it's going to be tough. It's always tough up there. Oh, 100%. especially when it's still this time early of year, in the year. It's still humid. Muggy. It's still so hot. Yeah. Um, so that'll be a big challenge for the for the Panthers. Yeah, for sure. Um, we we sort of cruise down to to some of those stats and and the big players. I thought uh, Ryan Hoffman was was really put under pressure with the, the defensive scrutiny that, that Brody Croft was coming under. Yeah. But it was quite funny, all the talk uh, being laid with, with Brody Croft about d- defensive um, efforts. Uh, and I felt the person who, who let their side down most in defence was Jonathan Thurston. Yeah, yeah. No, that, right. They did really, really well um, in, in isolating him one-on-one and then fighting for that quick play of the ball. Yeah. There was two occasions where he got left on the ground and then another occasion... Um, where he was left trying to swap the yeah. ball down and they just scored, scored on his outside. So, yeah, hats off to, to taking it to a, to a legend and, and trying to isolate, yeah. you know, arguably the the uh, the underbelly of, of his strengths, which is his defence, yes. you know. Not that he's a terrible defender no. as far as a halfback goes, but no. it, it's never really the he's, strength of a halfback. He's you know? not a big man. No, yeah, he's, he's very got, slight. He's got the shoulders of a brown snake. So. Yeah, yeah looks so. like, built like a coat hanger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a disappointing thing, you know, like, the, the completions in the end weren't weren't terrible from the Cowboys. So we see seventy six percent in comparison to the the Storm seventy. Yeah. Right. Um, you know. The, Interesting. Yeah, but yeah, you see there like the line breaks, double the line breaks, six to three, um, and then we go down to um, the errors, fifteen errors. Yeah. You know, and then concede eleven penalties. Yeah. You're gonna have a fucking pretty tough day when when errors and penalties are they're compounding factors because it just means more time in your own goal line yeah, when right. you're defending. So. Yeah, it, it was – how often do you see Storm lose 2-0? I don't know the stat of the last time that happened, but I was, I, I, I was pretty much just hoping and praying that that was – For sure, it was 2015. Yeah, right. It was Eels, then Broncos. Oh, there you go. So, um, yeah. But before that, it was probably a long time as well, you know. So, yeah. you're right. It, it doesn't really happen. No. Um, right. Well, things I noticed in the game was Justin O'Neill really digged in in defence. Yeah. Really dug in, sorry. Um, went hard. He's got some really good – one on one contact with a lot of play, with a lot of the bigger guys. He uses his height well. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah, he just gets in front and just mm-hmm. he's a big body. Mm-hmm. Um, Cohen Hess was dominant around tied forwards. Yep. So he started the game, but I feel like he where he really started to make an impact was at the back end of each half. Yeah. Um, Runs a great line too. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and he's so young still. You know, he's yeah. going to be just going to be a great player. He's just going to get better and better. Yeah. 
I thought defensively he was a little bit fragile. Yeah, he was. He was. It, it took him a little while to play himself into the game. Yeah. I don't think he was used to the, the speed of the game. Yeah, that's right. Because um, yeah. Yeah, it, it would have been oh, a, a good while since he started. Yeah. You know, we, we sort of found ourselves in this position last year when Ethan Lowe was starting to struggle with that, that little neck injury when he went back to the bench and, and Hess came on and had that good run of form. Um, yeah. that, that game against Parramatta... Um, Brings brings back memories. I think he scored yeah two or three tries off of I think it was Thurston's one of Thurston's last games before he ended up getting injured. Right. But um yeah. Can score a try. <laughs> I think he's almost at about a fifty percent strike yeah. rate at the moment as a back row like That's you're doing right. right. Him and uh, Lockie Fitzgibbon. Lockie Fitzgibbon. Yeah. yeah. Probably the, the most prolific back row try scorers. Yeah. At, at the minute. So. Yeah. Um. Just disappointing for the Cowboys, but like we said, I think there's a good opportunity for them with a bit of an under strength. Yeah. Um, Panthers, side. Panthers side and yeah. you know no doubt the, the expectation a side like that coming in with, with premiership favourites and, and Paul Green said that, that they probably started to believe the hype a little bit too much yeah. that it was just going to happen and they got this amazing forward pack and you know and not to mention that a pretty tough couple of opening rounds at sure. Broncos at Suncorp and then they're going to back it up at Melbourne in Melbourne yeah you know yeah, it's tough yeah but I think it, it's a good Good point to, to reflect on yourselves early. Yes. And good reality check. Yeah, they kind of need that. Yeah. 2015, they got touched up by the Broncos in round two or whatever it was. Yep. And they started off pretty pretty average. Yeah. So, you know, don't yeah. write them off. Yeah, it's not panic stations by any nah. means. Fuck, we've got way too long to go in the season. And Thurston isn't, it, isn't playing very well at playing the moment. terrible, to be so, compl- brutally honest. I don't think he's going to play that badly all season. So when he starts getting the form that we know he, he yeah. produces, yeah. Um, we'll see a big difference. Yeah, definitely. Alrighty, moving on to Friday night. We've seen the uh, the Bulldogs upset the Penrith Panthers 20 points to 18. Mm. Wow, well, this is a victory that we didn't really see coming. I think having seen Penrith have two comeback victories, we thought this might have been the game where they actually started to to build yeah. on something and, and a bit close to an 80-minute performance. And deserve a win sort of thing. Correct. From the, from Correct. the get-go, yeah. Mm. But yeah, hats off to the to the new shape that the Bulldogs brought. Uh, Frawley dropped to reserve grade. Mm. Um, Jeremy Marshall King. He stood up. Yeah, he just did his job. Yeah, you know, got on the outside very well and, and just catch pass. Yeah, just his just job. held his defender. Yeah, just did his job. Um, took got, some took some good heat. I was gonna say got whacked. Yeah, took got some, absolutely whacked a few times. Yeah, got up and, and got on with it. So. Yeah. And uh, I guess the, the star of the show for the dogs was Moses Zimba oh, at the man. back. He was fucking unbelievable. Just, just his kick returns. Yeah. Um, there, there was a couple of um, plays in the game where Corey Harawira Naira, his his uh, kick chase was just way too overzealous. Yeah, right. And and by just kept picking yeah. him off one on one. Burnt him. Late feet and see you later. So yeah. yeah, no doubt that's something that he'll be coming under scrutiny from uh, Anthony Griffin with in a bit of video this morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, the intention was good, but you got to got to keep the line. Exactly. You've got to play like Moses Zembo at the yeah, back. You've got to play for your fundamentals right, eh? That's right. But, uh, yeah. Moses just looks a lot more free he? at fullback. Yeah. He's really got a chance to utilise his running game. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a, a world of difference. It's funny how you don't get to see these attributes that a player has until they're given that freedom. Yeah. You know, look at the difference that we've seen in Michael Leisha at the back end of the game when Des yeah. Hasler sort of put his hand up and like, oh, I've got to let him run. Yeah, last season. Yeah, yeah, yeah massive difference. Yeah. yeah, so even he's playing, you know, I don't think he's playing outstanding football, but he's definitely a lot more influential yeah. than fucking catch pass. That's right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, how did you feel the uh, the forwards for the dog stood up? Um, I think, yeah, I think Woods and Clemmer did their job. Um. I didn't think there was anything outstanding. No. But they definitely were the were a lot more gritty and tough that the way that we know the dogs do normally play. Yeah. They were sort of back to the dogs of war. Again, yeah. That we know them as. You yeah. Know? So, oh mate, hats off to them. It's good to see them get on board. Yeah. Get on the get on the board on the ladder. To, to be honest though, did you feel as though you we were just going to see Penrith whip another one out from Abs- behind? Oh yeah, I did actually. Yeah, I did. But um, they were so resilient, the dogs. Mm-hmm. I don't know where they got it from, but they were just resilient. Yeah, I think they were just, yeah, like you said, the dogs of war, they just dug in. Yeah. And... Did oh. Morris show some toe? Yeah. In that try, he still yeah. got it, baby. Yeah, starts... Don't, don't rule him out. Starts Wonger Blake. Yeah, mm. don't rule him out for uh, Origin. Well, yeah, we've seen the feats that both those Morris brothers have put in for the, the Sky Blue jersey, yeah. you know, shoulder dislocations they, they and never knees look, and... They never look out of place in the Blues jerseys. Nah, nah, not at all. But uh, obviously the big talking point of the match was, was the injury to... Rookie halfback Nathan Cleary um, expected to be out for anywhere up to ten weeks with a with an MCL tear. Pretty bad. It's a big blow to his um, origin chances as well because he was sure. definitely being spoken about it. In fact, I said before that 
I'd be picking him. You know, mm. so he's and you'd almost yeah. base that off. We were saying it before the podcast started, off Future? Maloney. Oh yeah, and Maloney. Yeah, you know, the, that that's the reason why Michael Morgan sort of got his starts yeah. in Origin was because, and same with Gavin Cooper was the combination yes. of Jonathan Thurston. Hence, you know, the storm influence across the side as well. It's those combinations to powerhouse sides. Absolutely. It makes total sense to yeah. put Maloney and, and, and Cleary in together. Well, especially, you know, you're not, you're not going into a Blues camp trying to improve the players. No. You're just getting combinations yeah. working as quick as you can. That's right. Um, so if that's already happening week in, week out in, cl- in Clubland... It makes um, it a lot easier. Yeah, exactly right. And I think he actually has the mature style of play that, that represents state of origin. Yeah. Whereas, you know, we're, we're talking about players like Latrell Mitchell, who has untapped oh, individual potential, yeah. but, but, gets, but gets very sooky when things aren't going his yes. way, pulls that fucking, yeah. that, <laughs> y- that yuck face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When <laughs> things like are going that. well, mm. you know, Latrell Mitchell is, is the pinnacle of, of what you want to see out yes. of a, a young player coming through the grade. But yeah, put under adversity when, you know, there's no, no points being scored after fucking 50 minutes yeah. and... You know, who's got the grit and determination? And penalty goes against him or something. He's, he does get very negative very quickly. Yeah. yeah. And that's not what they need in Origin. No. So he, he's still a few years off, I think, Latrell. I hope they, yeah, put the brakes Maybe, on. Yeah, a year or two. Mm. Yeah, mm. put Definitely. the brakes on him. Um, yeah, how, how do you see the dogs building off this? I don't I don't think they can start getting too carried no, away. No, no, no. It was no, far from convincing. It wasn't overly convincing. Like I said, they grounded out. But sometimes a team needs that. They need that, just that win that... They may not have really deserved. Just get the points on the board. Yep. It gives them a bit of confidence. But it definitely didn't help the Panthers, obviously, Cleary going off. Mm. I felt like they looked really lost without him out there. Yeah. Maloney did stand up and, and get involved a lot more and get get a lot more hands on the ball. But yeah. they just still didn't look like the same team. Yeah, well, you hope that this... And obviously. This, yeah, yeah, you hope that this injury to Cleary becomes a, a positive for James Maloney and yeah. he starts living up to the leader that we know... That's can right. be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it could go either way, I think. Yeah. But from memory, I'm pretty sure the dogs have Parramatta um, coming in around yeah. four. So a, a big opportunity for them to go, you know, two two run uh, two wins in a row. Yeah. But, you know, you, you've got to start to think, oh, when does it just become a numbers game? And, and Parramatta needs to get yeah, that desperation right. win. So it, it, it makes for a really interesting Yeah. Well, it's game. pretty much crisis point at the moment for Parramatta. So well, if I was Parramatta, I'd be happy on versing the dogs out of, out of a lot of the teams, you mm-hmm. know. So yeah, definitely. Could be a lot worse. All right, so we go to game number two on Friday night, which uh, saw the Broncos sneak home nine points to seven over the West Tigers in Golden Point. So obviously the game that, that came with a lot of conjecture mm. um, around the decision that we've already covered off, so we won't bother doubling down yeah. on that. But, um, yeah, the Broncos not even scoring a try to get this one. So the hero was Jermaine Asako, yeah. the, the rookie in his uh, fourth yeah fourth NRL match. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, what do you what do you make? Well, that's the first time the Broncos have ever won a game without scoring a try in their history. Pretty phenomenal, eh? It was, yeah. yeah. Jermaine Asako, hats off to him. The composure he showed in those moments, like with the field goal and the and the, all those penalty goals, um, yeah, outstanding. Mm. And, and uh, I tell you what, it's going to be hard for Jordan Carhu to crack the team when he comes back from that broken jaw. Yep. Um, but overall, both, yeah, like we said earlier, both teams didn't play well, but Tigers. Their resilience and their scrambling defence is what kept the Broncos out. Yep. And I'm just stoked that the Broncos got up, got up on them because the Tigers have beaten the Roosters and the Storm in the last few weeks. Mm. So, yes, they won in a very scrappy and controversial manner, but it's still a big win for them. 100%. And, um, yeah, look, I was happy to see Jack Bird out there come out. He, he played solid. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything outstanding, but I thought he got involved. And he looked like he fit in, actually, to be honest, which yep. was a bit of a surprise for me. So... I'm just happy they, they, they fought that one out and, and dug it out and got it. Yeah, definitely. You know? They didn't I, I really, think, really deserve it. Mm, I think the challenge for the Broncos this week is now coming up against a, a Titans team who got absolutely pants. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, they they just got pants, so we can just do the same thing. Yeah, that's So I right. hope that they don't get in that. And you know that it's not going to happen. Any Wayne Bennett coach team is going to bring them back down to earth. Generally, quick yeah. And, there's generally not too much complacency in the yeah. Broncos camp. But and any time you have um, like an interstate battle, um, you know that they're like the Titans. They, they're going to stand up. Yeah, they will. Yeah, um, they will. You expect them to bounce back, especially with the number of ex-Bronco players that, yeah. that exist in that Titans team. Yes. Um, you know Wallace Taylor. Um, yeah, yeah. If exactly. Taylor plays, because Taylor could be in hot water. He did throw a leg out yesterday mm. against the Dragons and he, he, he nearly tripped someone over. Yeah, right. He was trying to kick the ball in his defence, but um, we know what the match review committee is like. We know what the judiciary is like. They'll yeah. probably, depending on his loading. previous loading points and all that, he mm. may miss this week. So 
We'll just have to keep an eye on that one. Yeah. Um, um, but what else was there? Ben- Benji Marshall, um, yeah. you know, he, he went down with that, well, fought through that ankle injury um, for the last 10, 15 minutes. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how he's po- uh, poised for the for the next game. So um, we're hearing that, that Tyson Gamble, the, mm. the young uh, Redcliffe junior, <laughs> um, yeah, could, could get his... Mm. Chance um, yeah, right. on Ivan Cleary's side, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see which way they go and, and how what the extent of that is. I haven't heard anything as far as scans coming back for Benji Marshall, but geez, he's still being resilient. It's it's great to see that oh. he, he dug in there. There was no way they were trying to drag him, and he just said, "Fucking strap the outside of the thing, let's keep yeah, going." Let's and go. yeah, kept yeah. on the march, and then straight after they tried to pick him out, and he fucking I can't remember who was carrying the ball, but got underneath the ball and forced an yeah, error. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah I know. so you know, it, it just shows the the. The level of His confidence attitude, that he's man. playing with now, yeah. The maturity and the confidence that Marshall's got this year is out of this world. We knew he had the maturity, but he didn't have the confidence last year. Yes, now yeah, he's got very it. Much but so. one thing I will know, well, one thing I've got to say about the Tigers at the moment is massive hats off to their forwards like Russell Packer. Oh, how good is it? He's Eisenhuth. Just, Eisenhuth, man, stood up in place of Elijah, of Taylor, Elijah Taylor. You know, yeah. someone who just gets about their work and. You don't really notice them so much on the field and, until you see their overall stats at the end of the game. Like, and that's not an easy position to cover when you've got no. a, a Mr. Workhorse like that. And, yeah, Eisenhuth was was everywhere. There must be a reason he's getting picked, you know, uh, you know, put in that spot because they've got heaps of experienced forwards yeah. in, in their ranks. And, yeah. Yeah, he's obviously a star of the future, Matt Yeah, he was, he was really, really good. But I just noticed that the, the Broncos forwards, like we saw them dominate the Cowboys forwards last week. They couldn't get the same dominance this week against the Tigers. No, they and I think that came with um, Pango getting injured. Yeah, that's right. That didn't that help. Hurt no, a lot. Like, yeah, and then on the back of that, the Broncos halves Nick Arima and Milford they couldn't play direct. No. And when they're not playing direct and up the middle and fast, they're useless. Yes, they're pretty much taken out of the game. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was just a they got home shit game of footy to watch overall. But yeah, it was fucking terrible. Wasn't it was it? shocking, man. I yeah. felt guilty afterwards for winning, but yeah, we. Um, they, I think someone made that that um, point. About the Broncos' demeanor after the game. Yeah, they almost felt guilty. Like, oh fuck, I guess we got to win. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, yeah, interesting. Hmm. Alrighty, on to Super Saturday. Fucking hell, Canberra Raiders losing <laughs> twenty points to nineteen to the New Zealand <laughs> oh Warriors. God. Stuff being a Raiders fan, eh? I'm yeah, I feel sorry for you if you are a Green Machine supporter. Um, fuck, I don't know. Maybe you need a bit put, of counselling. I think put something in that fucking Viking clap or something. <laughs> Jesus, Viking slap or something. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Like you go back and watch those last two sets of defense, uh, and, and I think you'll be hard pressed uh, finding evidence of, of how to defend worse. Yeah, that's right. In, yeah. a, in a clutch moment. Yeah. The Warriors literally went eighty meters. It was like a training run. It was like what you do on a team run. Yeah. Like okay, boys, we're gonna set up for a field goal. Yeah. It you literally could not was a have fucking made it team any run. better. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, but yeah, just and Johnson. The the depth that Samuel Sonny dug in that line on that last carry before Sean Johnson took that last attempt at field goal, like yeah, it was just crazy. Like yeah, the the amount of ball that the Raiders had. Like let's have a look. They can shoot themselves in the foot. <clears throat> oh, yeah, so like possession was just about even. Completion rates were, were just about even. You know, a, a little bit in favour of Warriors. of the Warriors at the end. Completed eighty percent compared to. Um, the the Raiders in seventy six, um, you know they they had the the share of possession finished with a couple of extra minutes with the footy in hand. The Warriors come the back end of the game, mm-hmm. but um, we we have a look at um, some of the defence. What do we got there? <clears throat> Missed tackles, like again, Whoa. like the Warriors are on the, the opposite side, much like they were. In, in a win against the, the Titans last week. 45 missed tackles by the Warriors. Yeah, versus 23. Like, how are you losing those games? You know? It's, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's super disappointing really to see. Yeah. You know, that, you that's what, the key stat. Torhu Harris, though, he's really he's really fitting in and he's really, really making a massive difference for that team at the moment. Yep. Eh? Even having, like, Ignatius Parsi back. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah just, just those little zings. Yeah, you know, around the park, and, and you feel like the spine's really starting to come to the party now. Oh. Tuvasha Shek is playing He's the quality playing well. of football that yeah. we're, we're expecting to Isaac see. Isaac Luke played well, very well. About time. Yeah, about time, man. About right. time. And, you know, I, I think that's case in point of sometimes um, negative outcomes causing positive outcomes. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you've seen any photos of Nathaniel Roach in the preseason. No. That cunt was peeled. True. Yeah, peeled. Right. I'd be getting fucking Asada around. <laughs> that that's how good he looked. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and I think. 
and and like they were there was photos of them training together. Right. So I think Isaac Luke sort of took it upon himself. He's like, I've got this kid up my ass. Yeah, yeah I need to fucking perform and keep my spot. So instead of beating him, let's just join him. Yeah. And yeah. he used the exuberance of him in the off season to, to work together, and it's it's obviously paid off. He's he's going to be an eighty minute nine. Yes. Um. So hopefully the body can can hold up. I think the experience. Um, at that age, yeah, you sort of just know how to move around the park. Yeah, absolutely. Like we see from Cameron Smith. Yeah, absolutely. Like you see him, and he almost like reserving energy in certain. Yeah, parts. exactly. You almost, if you were to watch um, video on him, just isolated on Cameron Smith, you almost think he's being lazy. Yeah, yeah. But he's, he's just so smart. efficient. Yeah, he's so so he's efficient. Smart. So, oh uh, yeah, <sighs> Ricky Stewart and Brad Arthur—they're probably the two coaches coming under most scrutiny and under the most pressure at the moment, mm. as far as performance goes. Um, it's. I don't even know where you address it. No. It it's just lack of respect for yourself, almost like mm. coming into that point of the game and and not performing. Yeah. Like just a yeah. I'm gonna show more. They're gonna show more determination. Like they, I, I feel like they're they're almost thinking it's gonna happen for them mm. in a way. Like they hit the lead <laughs> and they're just gonna keep going. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Yeah, because Canberra a year or two ago everything got went was going their way. Yes, but now it's not, mm. and they I just, I just feel like they don't know how to overcome that. And I don't know how you'd overcome that either. It's hard, but it's either working for you or it isn't. And mm. I remember when the Raiders were on those runs, like certain the ball would bounce in their favour or the things would go their way. But right now it's just not happening for them. They just need to keep working hard. And the, there's got to be some point where the energy of the the halves dilemma. Is starting to detract from yeah. the performance of the side. Kind of like last year with the Bronx. Yep. When they had that, oh, you know, is Hunt or Nicarima. You know, they were swapping around a lot. They had Marshall. I think they went through about, yeah. four, you know, four different halves combinations in the first six weeks mm. or something. And I've been reading that um, there's been links with um, oh, Caesar, Caesar and the, the Dogs. And the Dogs, yeah. So, you know, when you're hearing whispers of that, mm, yeah. it, it's never good. No, it's not It's good. never a good thing. No, so, you know, and, and Caesar's not a nine. No, he's not. Oh God, no. Not a nine. Not like, even why are we even wasting our time there? So, you yeah. know, I think a lot's got to be um, a lot's got to be asked. But the, I watched the uh, the Raiders reserve grade team, the Mounties, on the weekend, oh, yeah. and they've actually got some some handy players down mm. there. Like they've got Adahingano from the Warriors oh, yeah, down right. there. Cooper Bambling, who came through the Cowboys system, played quite well. Um, they've got Craig Garvey, who's a fucking oh, yeah. nine. Yeah, he's a proper nine. He's man. a proper nine, and yeah. you know, you, you felt you feel as though Craig Garvey of, of three or four years ago, he was really on the cusp yeah. of, of making something before yeah. he had a few um, bad injuries. But yeah, yeah, because he was I, at the Dogs, yeah, wasn't he? And yeah. the Dragons before that. And That's where he really sort of came into his own right. through the grades. Was at the Dragons, but uh, yeah, you, you saw why it. buy him? Why 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 sign him if you're not ever going to use the lad? I you know? honestly don't understand it. <laughs> You know, and I feel like yeah. you see certain clubs like that. Um, I feel like the dogs sort of do that as well. I feel like the Bronx do it too. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, especially yeah. with nines. Yeah, They've nine. recycled some good nines yeah. in the last five, six years, haven't they? Absolutely. Um, I mean, they signed Tagatizi. They haven't used him yet this year. I'd I watched him play him. yesterday, actually. Did he go right? Tagatizi. He, um, he ended up... Who did he play for? Norse. Norse. He ended up um, bunging his shoulder up a little oh, bit. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, had a bit of a... Bit of a stinger. I'm not sure if he did end up getting back on the field, but yeah, I'd, I'd be looking at him soon. Fuck, he's sure. a big body man. Yeah. I forgot how big he was. Yeah, he's See him in huge, person, man. tall like, and just thick. Yeah, monster. Good lord. Yeah, I don't think there's any more to be really said. Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think people have got to be careful about you know the whole hype train yeah. of the Warriors. They're going. We're going to see the real Warriors this week. Yes, we really are going to see the w- real Warriors once they come up against the Roosters. Oh. I, th- I wouldn't be surprised. I. I would expect, with the momentum and the players that they have yeah. in key positions at the moment, that they should... Compete. They should compete. And I think they really need to double down on video of the the Knights game from yeah. this week and, and figure out where they need to be mm. strong. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's just a lot of effort defensively on their edges. Because yep. um, I felt even I don't want to go too far into the the Roosters Knights game, but I felt that's where the, the Knights sort of let themselves yeah, down. There's was, there was a couple of times where they were carrying attackers yeah. over the line and trying to hold them that's up. Right. Like, they just need to be better. There. That's right. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. If there's any team that can run on the back of a mo- of momentum, though, it is the Warriors. Yeah, undoubtedly. So you that know, back five. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy. So cheeky. What do we got here? The Rabbitohs and the Seagulls. <laughs> what a performance though from the Rabbits. Where did that come from? Sam Burgess. That's, That's what I was about to say. Came from. I was about it to came say. from fucking Sammy Boyle. And I think I've called it 
last week, I said if, if, the, if Sam Burgess can, can perform, mm. anything can happen. And George and Tom didn't drop the fucking ball. Yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. And I saw Sam get up in the face of Adam from oh, Blake and just dude, absolutely Dude, he fucking put it. about four massive shots on yeah. throughout that game. Yeah. yeah. He really, he came to play. Yeah. And I think it, it's a classic case of, I think this says more about where Parramatta is at mm. versus where Manly's at. Wow, yeah. Oof. You yeah, know what I mean? They got touched up last week by yeah. the Seagulls. Yeah, and then they come out. And I think in um, in a wet game, it was more just who got the rub of the green early and was able to adapt to those conditions. Yeah, well, and like I, the, I they felt, scored in the first minute? Yeah. Robert Jennings, first minute try. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, just stri- first set. Yeah, just stripped him on the edge. Yeah. Um, yeah, they they just never really got into the game. Um, Cherry Evans had a polar opposite game, mm. you know, and I think it was interesting to see, you know, I think the the game in um, Penrith last week, I think it was about 35 degrees, it's stinking hot, yeah. and now we're going a super slippery. Mm. And I think that just suited um, the, the yeah, the, the tightness of, of the ruck. They, they just played super tight, mm. and then their spacings with the ball were just good variations through the hands, uh, they didn't try to overcomplicate things with runners trying to get on the outside or, yeah. or anything like that. And and just the body of Greg Inglis. Yeah. I think they just used him quite well in, in holding him up yes. in the line yep. to and try and create those those spaces. Yeah, well, yeah. And then they just started playing on variations. How many times did we see Alex Johnson cut out yeah. Greg Inglis and go what to What about the, the fucking length of the field effort? Yeah, man. Yeah, he's a free. He's still got it, man. He goes missing sometimes, Johnston, but Jeez. he's a great player. Yeah, and I think that's part and parcel of him playing one at the moment. Yeah. You know, if, if things aren't starting to yeah. flow from the middle first. You don't see him. Yeah, you don't see him. Whereas um, I think once we do see Inglis back at fullback, you know, Alex Johnson will, will see Do you think we fullback. are going to see Inglis back at yeah, fullback? Yeah. What, what are they waiting I think, for? I think, fitness? Or? Yeah, yeah, I think right. that's a general consensus around that. Um, we've got a question there from J.D. Harris. Benny Matt. Darren Lockyer, exchange haircuts over the off season. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes> <laughs> Correct. <they> did. <laughs> we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't have the drug habit, that's all. <laughs> oh, well played. Well played. I'm just here for the likes, so <laughs> it's all good. The more you talk about my hair, the more attention we get in the videos. <laughs> just throw a like on there, man. One like, one prayer. That's for it. Benny's hairline. <laughs> Sad reacts only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Bald is sexy. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, exactly right, man. Joe Rogan's hot as fuck. Dean Baldry as well. Another, another great example. <laughs> um, the young half, Adam <laughs> Doyhe. I feel like he's really standing up in place of, he's of tall. Adam Reynolds. Yeah, isn't he? <laughs> he's yeah. Six foot three, yeah, I he's think. He's rangy. Real rangy. Biggest halfback since Cuff in under 12. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> and, let's, and let's face it, um, three out of seven as far as conversions go, that fucking scoreboard could have mm. even looked even more unfavourable. Yeah. Um, as as far as um, Manly goes for, for next week, do, do you sort of just try and rub it? I don't think you well, can just rub it off. Like, look what Parramatta does. They try to just sort of shake it off and they still didn't fucking win That's this right. week. Well, they've seen, we've seen <clears> them, you know, three completely different performances from the Seagulls almost. Yeah, it's been all we? over the shop, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Lachlan Croker and Cherry Evans is is good or bad as a combination. I can't work it out. It is sort of funky, eh? Yeah. Because I, I feel um, defensively he's really solid. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's very solid. Made a great tackle on Crichton yeah. on one-on-one early on in the game. Yeah, he definitely um, goes hard. Yeah. Mi- missed kind tackles. Like, like, like 45 missed tackles yeah, from wow. Manly. Like, there you go. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, 13 errors. You know. But you look at that. Penalties conceded. 11 from the Rabbitohs. So... You can't complain that the, the rub wasn't there for them. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? What's Rhino Just got for Rhino me? For chat. Yeah, classic. <laughs> fuck off Mayfield. Go fucking do a deadlift, cunt. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was sort of, it, it was one of those performances that in those conditions, it is really hard to wrestle that momentum mm. back from the middle when you sort of lose that confidence yeah. with the footy. You're yeah. so you're so worried about getting those fundamentals mm. right mm. that you're not even you, you, you sort yeah, of lose the ability to be even running, yeah. running plays. I'll tell you what hurts as well is when you see your biggest fucking most powerful front row run up and get absolutely smacked by Sam Burgess, man. That hurts. Yeah, you, you, that that affects your confidence for the rest yeah. of the game. Yeah, who who wants the next run? Not me. Cunt. Yeah, exactly. Cherry Evans have one cunt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. No. Uh, so yeah, this was the double header. So after that, we had Parramatta and the Sharks. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, if you, if you wanted to find a game that was challenging the the Tigers Broncos for boring, this yeah. was it. This is another fucking stinker of a game. <laughs> um, yeah, one four, try each. Yeah, four penalty goals for yeah. the Sharks basically got them home. So I guess everyone's we're, we're all talking about how bad Parramatta are at the moment, but we look at that. They did it was one try each. Mm. It was just penalty goals that could have that 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 you know um, decided the game. It could have been easily a Penrith win, uh, Parramatta win. Yeah. So, I mean, are they really going that bad? Well, they are. The Sharks played like crap too, but it really wasn't as bad as what I think everyone thinks it was. No, US. no. But I think that, that lack of intent to, to get into an arm wrestle with the Sharks, which is what they love, yeah. they just played into that too greatly. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the fact that you gave them the option to just... Because they just, they just went desperation mode, the Cronulla Sharks, and it's like, we just need to get our season off to a start. Yeah. It was almost that... Melbourne Storm mentality. We don't care how. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna take the two. Yep. Yeah. They're on the board. Yeah, that's right. They're away now, so um yeah, I What do you say about this game, man? It's pretty shit. It was <laughs> very ordinary. But then you seen the shape that they played with for the Abar uh, trot. Yeah, it was quite nice. And you know, that takes it to eight four and mm. you're like, Rightio, game on. Here we go. It just yeah. didn't amount to yeah. anything. I I think it was almost the the style of play that Parramatta loves to, to execute on with the, the running game of, of Norman and Moses, because the forwards couldn't play with any pace to get their, the Sharks on the back foot, mm. because the Sharks just controlled the ball so well, yeah. they couldn't play off the back of it. Nah, there was right. nothing there for them. And then, you know, you throw in the mix, they're trying to get that new combination of Hayne at the back, and then he injures that hip yeah. flexor, so we don't know how long he's going to be gone for. Um yeah, just it, it makes things clunky when you have to have positional changes like that. They've got to be screaming Clint Gutherson, SOS. Oh, please. He's the shining light Yeah, for that club. I mean, but then how much pressure is on him when he comes back? And what happens if he doesn't perform game one? Like, <laughs> um, But what has to be spoken about, I guess, is why is it Hayne? Is Hayne the issue? Is he or not? Is he the issue in that team? Oh. Should have Parramatta focused on buying some more forwards in the off season as opposed to bringing back Jared Hayne. Well, yeah, I guess you look at who who they did go to for recruits, and it was Kane Evans, like another genuine sub. Yeah, yeah, true that. Never been a genuine starter. Has he even played yet this season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Yeah. He play on the weekend. Yeah, did he? Well, there you go. I didn't even see him. Exactly. Yeah, it shows how much influence he's having. Um, and again, how much they're having to rely. Nathan Brown, another great yeah, effort in a losing team. Two hundred running meters. <laughs> Um, for feet 180 yeah so. like what, what what do you do I think Parramatta it, they, they are genuinely losing those effort battles mm. those those effort battles that we talk about that um, we see how good sides like the Roosters and the Storm are at counter attacking when they need to yeah uh, and how much and how quickly they make you pay yeah, that's right they, they don't let anything go. Everything's an no. opportunity. And we're not seeing that from, from a side that's lacking confidence. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, penalties conceded, 9-6, to six, so add an extra 50% on there. Um, 30, like, they're both pretty shit, to be honest. Mm. You know, they're both pretty ordinary. Um, yeah, it was, just, it was just a game that never really amounted to anything nah. because of the amount of stoppages from those four penalty yeah, goals. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we were talking about before. Exactly. So you, you sort of weigh that up. You know, that takes around three minutes... Each Times that by four, there's 12 minutes. Yeah, it's dead. Over dead time, game. man. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's pretty gross. All right, we'll skip over that pretty quick, eh? Yeah, there's a shit game. Yeah, stinky. On to Sunday footy. Wow, the Dragons. So this is a, the second 50-point performance I've seen in consecutive weeks from a side in the NRL. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Manly being the, the side last week and the Dragons this week. You sort of felt like if the Dragons were going to sort of prove that they are building on, on the, the recruits that yes. they have in Graham and Hunt, uh, that this was a, a scoreline that we sort of come <laughs> to expect. Yeah. Um, I think the Titans were hoping for a little bit more with their, their, their love, Ash Taylor coming back into the side, mm. but it proved to be two fists of fuck all. We've seen a good try that they counted with to, to Michael Gordon. Yeah. I'm um, in the tenth minute early but, on. And that was, yeah, that it, made it six all or whatever it was. Yeah. It didn't really amount to, to anything off that. And, I think I've said it every single podcast, the, the shape that the Dragons are playing with, with Dufty and, and Widdop. They're good. Oh, mate, it's too good at the moment. It's the, scary to see. The combination that we're seeing between those three players in Dufty and Widdop and Hunt already, it is crazy. It is. They're, just they're hitting the, it off faster than Kronk, Tedesco and 
Kiri have hit it off. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, totally agree with that. They've really just... It's like they were just they're perfectly suited for each other. And they're using Dufty's speed. Oh, it is so It quick. is something that's, that can't be coached. It's mm. an asset that you either have or you don't. That's right. And you either you utilise it effectively or you don't. Yeah. And they're definitely doing that effectively. Mm. Um, we've seen in some of the highlights that we were watching pre-game again... Um, just Dufty's game awareness. There was one there where they got pinned with a play the ball on the left edge. Nana McDonald already peeled inside and then they ended up playing and Dufty just supported on the wing when they stripped him for a number that laugh I was able to play down to him. Yeah. And um, they got rewarded for that. Exactly. Yeah. Another one, they're pushing through the line. He no doubt was screaming for the ball mm-hmm. to be kicked their head from Widdop. Yeah. Got it. Still didn't even get the bounce right yeah. and, and had the skill um, to, to, to finish it off properly. Yeah. Um, but how good is Widdop? Seriously, how good is he, man? From goal kicking, from general play kicking. Yep. I think he had about three try assists from kicks. Yeah. Um, and scored one yep. from um, Ben Hunt's kick. So like, Well, he, he even towed it through for himself yeah, again off right. Ben Hunt. That's technically another kick. Like, he was just... It was like Harlem Globetrotters stuff towards the end there. They were just... Yep. They just unstoppable, man. Yep. Felt sorry for the Titans. It's a shame but, he's a pom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, well, it's good, though, for international footy. Like, but, man, he's just... At the moment, he's just killing it. I love that... The, the fact that he's playing so well is taking so much pressure off Ben Hunt. Yeah. And he's just able to focus on that running game and play that supportive role. Um, and is Hunt, is Hunt actually putting his name up for origin at the moment? I said it in conversations over the weekend. Yeah. Like, and I'm not talking for a bench spot either. I'm talking for a half spot. Because if they don't want to play Morgan and Munster, yeah. we could have Morgan at 5'8 and Hunt. Yep. Hunt in, um, in seven and you could have Munster on the bench because Munster's a great utility. Yeah, great utility. And I don't think that he should see... Being talked about as a um, as a interchange player as a negative. Nah, player. no way. Yeah. No way. No, 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 no way. I mean, yeah. he probably wouldn't have got a shot last year if it wasn't for mm. certain circumstances. Because because I sort of like Michael Morgan not being the dominant half. Yeah, so do I, I like him being able to use his size. Like he's ninety six kilos yeah. or something, and like yeah. six foot. Like he's a big half. He's a lot bigger than what you think. Isn't yes. He? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I like to see him used in that role. And yeah, if. I'm all for fucking representative teams being picked on form. Yeah. Like, let's just watch the best players have a crack at yeah. it. Oh, I fucking hate this. Oh, you know, like, let's pick the, the guys who know how to play Origin. Mm. I know there's certain to leaders. I know there's certain leaders that you want yeah. to be, because they know what it takes in certain moments because yeah. they've experienced that before. But when there's positions that are actually genuinely up for grabs yeah. in the air, yeah. fuck, why wouldn't you be picking on form? Which is the, the back line. Yeah. The back line for Queensland now, we posed the question last week on our page, is, is Darius Boyd potentially on the outer. Yeah. You know, is should should Greg Inglis even be mm, automatically picked. Automatically picked. Because you've got guys like Chambers, you've got Gagai, you've got Holmes, Holmes. you've got Oates. Yes. Like they, these are all guys that, that are on the, the cusp. Mm. Um so yeah, there, there's gotta be some decisions that are gonna be made that, that are based on form. And, uh, and further to that as well with with Origin on the New South Wales side, Jack DeBellin, man, he's been screaming out. Bro, to how good did he pay? But play. He's, yeah, he's, he's, um, he's been outstanding this year. Just yeah. that defence, man. Oh, that effort on defence where he ended up getting sin binned, I'm saying yeah. that, that is what I want to see yes. from you. If I'm McGregor, I'm like, fucking good boy. Yep, that's Dad right. respect for that. Yep. And it, they, it's almost like that's not a head explosion moment. That's no. like I'm doing my job and I trust. Yeah. I trust. If I get away with it, I get away with and, it. And guess what happened? Titans didn't score. And Dragons ended up going down the other end and scoring a try while he was off. Yeah. So it That's off backing your structure. That's a Melbourne Storm mentality. Yeah, That's a is. winner's mentality. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, I'm not going to get too carried away about no. the Dragons. Sorry, Bumper. Um, <laughs> but they've won the March Premiership again. Um, they seem to love What's that. What's he got? Dusty playing 126 to one leading try scorer. Get around it. Wow. Yeah. That is a hot tip. Yeah. Wow, yeah, right. But um, no, look, True. they are on fire at the moment, and it's good to see um, the combinations paying off the way they are. Yeah, let's just hope they, st- you know, as as a fan, you want the best players on the field at all times. Like, yeah. let's hope that, you know, teams that are in form stay injury-free. You know, it's a shame to see, you know, someone like Benji Marshall, who was playing with such good form, potentially have to miss some footy this week Cleary. because of fucking injury at Cleary. Uh, Connor Watson, who we're going to cover yeah. off in a second, like... Yeah, you, you want to see that. But as far as uh, Garth Brennan's Titans go, what, what do you say to those guys on the weekend? Is it just like, you know, we, we weren't good enough, the Dragons are that good at the moment? Like, how, how do you fucking pick a team up like that that you're trying to build confidence in and you know that you're going up against um, a stalwart in, in the Broncos this weekend, despite the Broncos being far from their best form? You know, they got in a good arm wrestle and beat the Cowboys the, the week prior. Weren't as convincing, but knocked off a team who's knocked off, you know, the, the other two, two premiership favourites. Yeah. Um, Oh, their back's against the wall at the moment. 
and um, especially if they're missing out tail of it. A, they could actually get touched up again this week. So I don't know what you say to them, man. <laughs> You're a better man than me if you know. I've got yeah, no that's, idea. that's a fair comment, eh? <laughs> got no idea. Yeah. All righty, last game of the round, Roosters versus the Knights. And off the back of the, the interview that Brown had on, on Fox League, <laughs> uh, he just basically just wanted this as a yard. It was almost like a yardstick game, mate. Yeah. Just wanted to see where they're at. And it, it was pretty evident that the systems and structures and execution, probably more so um, in, in counter attack, mm. were, were more uh, threatening from the Roosters. And they just they applied the pressure when they needed to, you know that freakish try that that yeah. Luke Keary set up off oh. the back of the chip to Radley, like amazing. Putting putting that in thirty seconds to to have the balls to put that in, yeah. you know, it, all it takes is a bounce of a ball and someone is, as as potent as Ponger and goes. Yeah. To to have that, that's that's a potential twelve point play. But that's Cronk man again, eh? Yep. Just always backs himself. He's always so accurate. Yeah. He got it perfect. They were in their own half. On the 40 line, he's kicked it. Kiri picks it up, man. And just that the class and the awareness to get across to Radley and, and, and get that ball away, man. Far yeah. out. That just that was a big moment for yeah. him. The kicking game of Cronk throughout that 80 minutes. The, the try to Ferguson. Pinpoint. Yeah. Like, just crazy. But, you know, hat, hats off to the Knights. I, I don't think, you know, it's sort of like I was saying earlier, I feel those fundamental um, defensive plays around the edges are coming off yeah. their own line. Yeah. You know, that, that just takes got time. Got caught out a couple of times, got carried over the line, things yeah. like that. But but that's what you expect of a, of a great team in the Roosters, yeah. utilising their big bodies against smaller men. Of course. Yeah, you've got to. Tick exactly. the boxes. I think, I think Brownie, even though he didn't set high expectations for that game, I think you'd find he's still a little bit disappointed because oh, they didn't no compete doubt. in the... 30 points. Yeah, they just didn't compete in the way that I thought... I think that he thought they would. Like, yeah. I think he was expecting to lose, mm -hmm. but I think he was expecting a, a much closer game. Yeah. And do you uh, think there was just a couple of moments early on where the Knights, like, they made a break, Ponga made a break and, and threw it to no one and things like that, where mm -hmm. just those little things, those execution plays. Yeah. Do you think that yeah. comes back to the, the physical nature that they've had to fight for these first two wins in, mm -hmm. almost catching up with them a little bit? You know, they had to go extra time week one. Yeah. They left it till the to late in the game. They were eight points down against the Raiders last week. Yeah. It was almost just like some of the younger bodies, are, are, they're yeah. just going to get challenged a little bit from the experience that the Roosters have. It may well have been. Yeah. yeah, it may well have been. Not to mention just the, the change in flow, losing Watson, you know, not having the choice of mm. moving him and Brock Lamb around. Yeah, that's right. You know, so it's a that, forced change. Yeah, so it just it just changes things up a little bit there. But uh yeah, that, that combination in the halves, Blake Ferguson running for two hundred meters three games in a row. Like I don't think there's an outside back in better form nah, than nah, him at the moment. Like there isn't. No, nah, he's on fire. Yeah. Dominant has. Yeah, crazy dominant. Mm. And yeah, that was one thing that actually surprised us and going through the stats. Like neither team completed at seventy percent. So to beat a, beat a side, it just shows, again, coming down to those effort plays at those execution moments. Yeah. You know, it, it came back to the, the Roosters, you know, counter-attacking from inside their own half when they needed to. Yeah. Um, you know, what else have we got there? 7-2 offload. So just creating that second phase, you know, you look at five more opportunities that they had to progress yeah. down the field and, and how many of those lead to points. Um, defensively, you know, not too much change there. The, that, the Roosters still missed 20 tackles, Newcastle 30. Yeah. Uh, both coaches not going to, even Trent Robinson would, would probably be a little bit disappointed with, with having over 20 missed tackles. Yeah. Um, and then penalties conceded. You know, you, you give three more penalties away to a side with the expectation in attack that the Roosters have. What you know, was Mogan doing? You didn't, I know you didn't see it, but what on earth was, was he doing? Yeah. He's pulled up, he's tackled someone, made a bit of a try-saving tackle. Like It was like, yeah, you beauty, well done. Yeah. And he's just got up, picked him up by the jersey and started trying to drag him off, Gordon Talistow. And the ref's just gone, what are you doing? You just gotta, There's not much going on up there, upstairs. As a coach, you just must shake your head at players. Like it's, I always find it interesting, that the different styles of players. Like you have certain guys who are obsessed with the game, watch a whole lot of yeah. video are very aware of where t opposition teams are, are sitting on the ladder. And then you've yeah. got others that are just like so insular and it's like, this is how I need to get prepared and that's yeah. the job I do. And they need to function like that. And it, you've got certain guys that are just like, I need to get good at these things. And then they don't know the rules. Like what like we're saying, Jordan Kahu like, touches that ball 
after yeah. it doesn't go 10 last year and then gives away a penalty. Yeah. It's like, how do you not know yeah, that? That's right. How long have you been playing footy for? You're a fucking professional player <laughs> and you don't know this shit. Like, it's. Rules, man. Yeah, right. man. It's and very, even if you very didn't know the rules, you'd know that once you've tackled someone, you can't pick them up and drag them out. Like, it just didn't make any sense, man. It was just complete brain snap. <laughs> oh, Clueless. dearie me. But um, yeah, it's, it's great to see, you know, some sides that we weren't expecting to see up there. Um, the Warriors are going to be in for it when they come up against the Roosters this this week. Um, but yeah, I think having the opportunity to, to see where, where Newcastle failed is, is going to set them up for, for hopefully a competitive match. Yeah. yeah. I think yesterday was a bit of a reality check for them, yeah. in a way. You know, they've been... Get, not that they were getting carried away, but I think everyone was getting a little bit carried away. And I was yeah. getting excited with for them. And I was... Yeah. You know, I actually gave them a chance to win yesterday. Yeah. But I think it was a more of a reality check to see where they are compared to arguably... One of the best, you know, probably the best team in the comp yeah. on paper. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it was good. It was good, um, good, good, a good performance from the Roosters overall. It was good to see those combinations finally really clicking with Kiri and Kronk because they were just so dominant. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward over the next couple of weeks, you know, seeing, you know, how the Cowboys respond, how do the Sharks mm. start to respond. Are Parramatta going to continue to slide down? Are we going to see the Raiders get on the board? Like, who's going to start to really make their runs now? Are we going to start yeah. to see... Roosters in the in the storm just start to, to streak away. away like they're sort of expected to. How is Pen- Penrith going to react losing Cleary? Yep, yep. Um, that's a big one. Even as well. the Tigers, if Benji's gone and they still don't have Reynolds, Reynolds like, yeah, yeah. So interesting couple of weeks coming up. It's it's good that footy's starting to get into the rhythm of things now. It's, Definitely, it's good to have back. It's good to have something to talk about. Well, I don't think we've covered just about everything. I think we've spoken about some of the the issues that we wanted to speak about yeah. at the top of the podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. Guys, continue to, to share this as much as you can with your friends. We'll continue to post questions on our page as we see fit um, as far as things that are circulating the game. Yeah. Uh, Get your input. Yeah. Uh, we continue to put the audio on, on SoundCloud. It's on the um, Apple Podcast app, so you know you can, can listen to the audio if you don't catch all the, the live stream on Facebook with us now. We, we do realise we have to do these while most of you are at work. Mm. Um, so, yeah, otherwise we you can re-watch it on Facebook again. Uh, post the, the YouTube um, version up on YouTube or yeah just just listen to the, the raw audio that comes up either on SoundCloud or on the um, the Apple Podcast app so yeah like I was saying support the podcast share it um, get get your mates in on the banter that we put up on the page this, this is about having conversations of a footy around that the genuine fan level you know we're never going to have fucking NRL players sitting around with us we don't have that reach um, you know we, we're not experts where we have media passes and able to ask um, questions this is, this is more Having questions at that level that the genuine fan wants to have the, yeah. that, that conversation at. So by all means, jump in on board with us and, and enjoy uh, the, the greatest game of all. So until until later in the week, again, we'll, we'll endeavour to uh, get Cuth on here again because I'm very much enjoying this process, as I say, every time that he's on. Um, yeah, That's so it. we'll keep it rolling. Sweet, bro. Thank you very much, awesome, champion. Man. Thanks for having me. Alrighty, gang. We'll see you later in the week, gang. Footy rants, we're out. Go the Bronx. Duck. <laughs> <laughs>